Hey, this time we're going to be covering how to make a random sound play when you touch a character on their nose. This is known in the community as boopable snoots, and there are lots of sort of different ways to do it. This is one of the ways to do it, and it also gives me the opportunity to show off the random audio clip player. There's various ways of playing random sounds, but the method I've come up with here is super simple for new players to take a look at, and doesn't actually involve any logic, so that's kind of nice. Let's go take a look. If I hop over here into Smooth POV, you'll see I've got the uh, Akita Avatar by Zab. Uh, check out a link to their Sketchfab in the video description. They've got some awesome models there you can download and play. Um, this will work with any character really, but I had access to this one quite easily via the Neos Essentials folder, and I helped set it up when it was important to Neos, so, uh, you know, I chose it this one. Um, and so here you'll see if I go ahead and touch with my finger, you'll hear the sound. And that's what we're going to do. I don't really have any Naus sound effects, and that's because I'm limited to using sound effects that I have. If you have some permissively licensed sound effects you'd like to give to me for my uh, future videos, do let me know. I'll take a look at them. Uh, all right, let's hop into some empty area here and uh, spawn that avatar again. You can, Like I said, you can find this avatar in Neos Essentials, Avatars, Anthro, and then it's the Akita there. Or please choose whichever avatar you'd like. With this crate, I'm just going to put it on the ground, and then I'm going to go ahead and equip my developer tooltip. You should only use, need to use the developer tooltip here, although some advanced stuff later on will show you how to do more things that might involve logics. So uh, let's go ahead and inspect the avatar's head. To do this, I've equipped my uh, developer tooltip here. I'm going to aim at the avatar's head and hit secondary. This will select their head collider. Now I can go to the context menu and hit open inspector. With this open here, we'll see that the head has been uh, opened in the inspector. What we need to do now is create a um, area that we want to be touchable, or which should represent the, the front of their, their nose here. So to do that, I've got head selected here. I'm going to hit star. Star creates an empty child that we can position uh, separately from the head here. So then using the gizmos here, I'm just going to put this on the nose a little bit here, and then we're done. Now we need to start adding components to it. So the first component we need is a um, collider, which represents the area that we want to touch. Uh, I recommend a sphere collider for this, but feel free to use any that you'd like. Um, check out my collider video, also link to the video description for more information on colliders. We're going to go to attach component, physics, colliders, and then sphere collider. The um, pink box here you can see is, is representing the bounds of the sphere collider, but it, I assure you it is spherical in shape. Um, I think this is slightly too big as it's, you know, entrenching into sort of uh, the uh, arms and the shoulders a little bit, so I'm going to shrink it down. I know that 0.2 is a good number here from other tutorials, so there we go. Now 0.2 is set, uh, we've got the collider done. The next thing we need to add is the button source. This is the thing that's going to register a touch event and uh, propagate it through to the random audio clip player. We're going to be using a physical button to do this. Physical buttons are usually meant for buttons which go in and out. So if you think of like a button on an elevator where when you push it in, it goes into the wall a little bit and comes out when you let go. But you can actually cancel that behavior by setting up um, with a couple of settings. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to attach components, transform, interaction, physical button. I think I have a physical button tutorial in the, uh, in the list, so I'll put that in the video description as well. Now physical buttons added, just go ahead and take the current pressing depth here that says zero, grab it, and drop it into the press depth field. That will prevent the uh, button from moving when we touch it. Also, because we want this only to be physical touches, um, to go over touches briefly, physical touch means with an actual um, body part, namely fingers usually, or hands. Um, remote touch means with a laser, and out of sight touch means when you're not looking at it. I don't really use out of sight touch a lot, but I, I tend to use it in tutorials, so I... Uh, so enable that if you'd like it. I don't recommend it for this. So I'm going to just uh, uncheck allow remote touch and then it's just physical touch that will trigger this. You may also want to play with the active user filter. The active user filter will uh, enable you to selectively prevent or allow yourself to boop your own snoot if you're equipping this avatar. Right now it's set to disabled, which means that anyone will be able to touch it. But if you set to uh, exclude active user here, then you yourself will not be able to touch it. But anyone else that comes up and touches you will. With this added, we now need to add a couple more components. Let's go ahead and add a uh, the random audio clip player, which is the component that we're talking about in this video, so attach component. This can be found in media and then a random audio clip player here. And then we we'll need one more, which is an attach component, common UI, button interactions, button action trigger. Now button action trigger is really quite, uh, you know, almost secretly awesome in that it can trigger really cool sort of inbuilt 
um, properties and methods on uh, components. You can tell which ones are compatible by seeing this open bracket, close bracket kind of pattern on the components. So you'll see here that play has an open bracket and close bracket after it, as does play at point. For our purposes, we don't need to use play at point, we can just use play. So go ahead and grab the word play and drop it into on pressed of the button action trigger. This will now um, Seamlessly behind the scenes button action trigger will hook up with the uh, physical button such that when we push um, a physical button, which is now this sphere on the end of the nose, it will call to the button action trigger, which will then call to the random audio clip player and call it to play a sound. The remaining thing that we need to do is add some clips for it to play. If you hit add here, you'll see that it adds another uh, property onto the component. This is a clip. Um, the clip has a number of properties on it that you can configure, namely the clip, which is the actual audio file that you need to specify for it to play. The weighting, which is to do with weighted randomness, this makes more sense when I add two. If I put, um, say, 0 0.25 here, and then 0 0.75 here, it would mean that um, it is three times more likely to play audio clip one than it is to play audio clip zero here. If you want them all to be the same randomness, go ahead and hit one. Go ahead and hit one here, and then you're good to go. You can also go ahead and change the speed, volume, and spatialized settings. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and change those because I don't really need to for this video, but you can go ahead and do that if you'd like. Uh, so now we just need some audio clips. Like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, I only have the UI sound effects to work with, but if you've got uh, permissively licensed sound effect packs that I can use for my tutorials, do let me know. I'll put a link in the video description to them and start using them. I'm kind of tired of these audio clips. I'm going to go grab them. You can find these in... Actually, where did I put them? I think I deleted them, so I'll spawn them again. You can find these inside Neos Essentials Sound Effects UI. Once inside there, just pick any two that you like for, for testing. I'm going to go ahead and pick FX uh, wrong and FX correct. These are my usual test sounds because I know them very well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this sound. And then with my other hand, I'm going to go ahead and push primary in this field. And you'll see it fills in. And primary for the second one. And you see it fills in. Now we have those two sound effects hooked up. With that, you're basically done. There is more that you might want to add to this, but um, it works. So if we go ahead and deselect all put our um, developer tooltip on the uh, tool shelf here. And then I walk up to Zavatar and I touch its nose. You'll see that we get a sound. There isn't a nice sound. Like I said, I don't really have any better sounds, but it can be whatever you want. Let's hit again. There we go, we heard that second sound. And it will just randomly cycle between those. That's really all there is to it. Um, there's no logic involved in this. There's no complexity. If you want to add complexity, then um, you'll start getting into the logics world. Custom things that you might want to do are things like timeouts such that you can't spam it um, and um, different sounds for different users. I can cover those in a follow-up video if you'd like, but I believe this is simple enough to leave off here for someone to get started. Take a look, play around, and uh, keep an eye on button action trigger. It can do a lot of stuff that sometimes isn't obvious. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.